everyone, I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. I'm here at the Southern Alberta Institute of Technology and today I would like to talk and today I would like to talk to you about Bitcoin transaction fees. So, what is a Bitcoin transaction fee? Well, if you've been using Bitcoin and haven't noticed already, every time you send Bitcoin from one address to another, there is a fee added on top of the value that you're sending, uh, and that fee has been getting progressively more expensive. Back in the day, it used to be fractions of a penny. This is uh, a few years back. Uh, then it went up to a few cents. Um, last year, it started getting up to uh, 30, 40, 50 cents. Uh, and lately, it's been in the realm of a few dollars. When you pay a fee, that fee is going to a Bitcoin miner. A miner is someone who verifies transactions and volunteers their computing power to maintain the security of the Bitcoin network. Now this is part of a two-part incentive structure that encourages people to do this. Part one is the reward of newly minted Bitcoin, but part two is transaction fees. Now since the number of newly minted Bitcoin over time will drop, Miners are going to rely more and more on Bitcoin transaction fees for their income. Now, Bitcoin transaction fees are not calculated by how much money you're sending, but rather how much space in kilobytes your transaction will take up on the Bitcoin blockchain. So when you're looking at spending $5 on a cup of coffee, with the current transaction fee being a few dollars, that is not really a good use of a Bitcoin transaction fee. But if you're looking at sending thousands or possibly millions of dollars across the globe, then Bitcoin transaction fees can look quite attractive. So what's the deal with the increase in fees? Well, in its current state, the Bitcoin network can only handle a few transactions per second. And with an influx of new users, people are basically trying to incentivize miners to include their transaction first by adding additional fees. So while large value transactions, people don't blink about attaching a $5 fee, people who are buying coffee are pretty much getting priced out of the market. A lot of people say this is to Bitcoin's detriment, but then you get into the argument of looking at a restaurant and saying nobody goes there anymore because it's too busy. People are still getting use out of it, just not the same people. This is purely an issue of supply and demand. With a limited number of transactions and a lot of people wanting to get their transaction through first, it's a matter of outbidding the rest of the market. So is this issue going to be solved, and if so, when? Well, there are solutions being proposed and currently worked on. Uh, this has been a debate for the past couple of years. I did recently, just a couple months back, make a video about the current state of the scaling debate. Uh, it has evolved since then, but I will link to that video in the cards here and down below. Uh, for an updated version of the debate, please check out the latest episode of Let's Talk Bitcoin, which I will also link below. On this episode, they get in quite a bit. Uh, it is a little technical, but they get into uh, the current solutions being proposed, which is the SegWit 2x proposal put forth by Barry Silbert. Uh, and then there is the BIP 148 proposal uh, that is set to activate on August 1st, which carries a lot of implications. Uh, I'm not going to get into those details right now, but please do check out that episode of Let's Talk Bitcoin. Uh, Andreas Antonopoulos, a very great speaker, does a fantastic job of breaking down what could happen with BIP 148. Both of these solutions are trying to tackle the issue of increased transaction fees and limited number of transactions per second. Uh, while these issues are being worked on, uh, I have noticed some people for smaller value transactions uh, start to turn to alternative means. Now, I think that's great. Everybody should be able to use whatever 
virtual currency that they choose. Um, and for me, uh, I see Bitcoin as long-term potential and a fantastic store of value. But when it comes to getting tips on my videos, uh, I don't think people are, are super stoked to be spending $5 to send me uh, a $1 tip. Um, and because of that, what I'm planning on doing is now accepting a few other digital currencies at the ends of my videos. So which ones am I looking at? Well, first and foremost, Litecoin, because it is the closest uh, to Bitcoin as far as the uh, code behind it goes. But I will also be accepting Dash and Ethereum. Uh, now, if you want to know exactly what I'll be doing with these afterwards, odds are, after I let it accumulate a little bit, I would just convert it into Bitcoin because for me, I see that as the best store of value. And potentially down the road, uh, these scaling issues will be solved and it can be both. But until then, I don't see it as a bad thing accepting alternative digital currencies and allowing them to serve the purpose of accepting small tips. I think it's a great ecosystem and uh, even if um, one of these other currencies weren't to work out and uh, were to crash in the future, again, I'm using it as a rail uh, to get back into Bitcoin and allow me to still take tips in the process. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know your thoughts on any of the issues I've discussed today. Just a heads up for those of you asking questions, I'm trying to get to them as best I can, but uh, the channel has gotten to a point where it's really tough for me to reply to everyone. So now I'm starting to do uh, live stream Q and A's at least once a week is where I'm gonna start and we'll see where it goes from there. But anyways, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Drop a tip if you're able to in the currency of your choice and share this video. I will see you guys next time on the BTC Sessions.